We're joined by Dahlia Fahmy. She's an assistant professor of political science at Long Island University. Dahlia, good to have you with us. Thanks for uh, having me. As Nisreen mentioned, the number of people in administrative detention has soared over the last couple of years. Is that because of the war in Gaza and the events that led to it? So right now there are 6,000 um, people in administrative detention. And what the day commemorates is not just those 6,000 individuals. Really, I thought the numbers were much lower. It was, uh, the numbers were lower, but according to the uh, United Nations, we're actually at the highest number in the past five years. But the day does just commemorate those. It also commemorates the 800,000 mm -hmm. individuals who have historically been held in administrative detention since 1967. Um, what is administrative detention? It's the um, holding and seizure of individuals um, by the state for security reasons. It's very different than criminal incarceration that we think about here in the United States, which is there's been a, an indictment and a trial and punishment for an act that has already happened. Administrative detention is aimed to incarcerate detain individuals for acts that might happen because they are perceived as possible future security threats. And I know the United Nations has called for Israel to cut down on this, but Israel's argument is this is information that they've gained from intelligence sources and, and, and they can't just put people out there in a normal trial because it would uh, allow sensitive information to be released. So the UN Commissioner on Human Rights, the Commission on Torture, um, Amnesty International, Richard Falk, the special uh, rapporteur on the issues in Palestine. Um, the European Union has also issued a statement saying these are all violations of the Fourth Geneva Convention. Um, but, but, it, but it does allow, that Fourth Geneva Convention does allow for this kind of detention under exceptional circumstances of national security. The Geneva Convention's wording is actually that an occupying force can remove individuals and displace them in different areas. Now, Israel doesn't acknowledge it's an occupying force. So this is where the wording gets very sticky with regards to this issue and the Geneva Convention. And Israel, of course, proud of its democracy, and they say that this really is not, uh, although critics say that this is something that's undemocratic, the Israelis will say, no, it's not, because people can appeal to a district court and then to the Israeli Supreme Court if they feel they're being uh, held uh, unfairly. Well, the interesting thing about Israel being celebrated as the only democracy in the Middle East is that there's two kinds of citizenship, right? There's rights and rules for Palestinians and those for Israelis. So this doesn't exist in any other democracy in the world where there's unequal understanding of citizenship. Now, the issue is that while we can say appeals happen, if there isn't an indictment, then what are people appealing for? Um, so it's not clear that Palestinians can actually look for their rights in this process. Now, I cannot imagine what it would be like to be uh, detained in this way without charges and without knowing how long uh, I'm going to be there. But if you look at the length of time that people have been detained, of the ones who are detained now, some of the numbers show that there are only uh, maybe a couple of dozen who have been there for more than two years. Uh, how big a problem is it? So the law, even the one that's um, started under the British mandate that Israel passed into law in 1945, put a cap on this at six months. And the fact that this goes beyond six months is, is problematic even within the legal regard. Now if we look at the number of children and women, and, and Haaretz, the Israeli paper, has documented and uh, written stories not just today but in the past couple of weeks about the, the stories of children, one being eight years old who's been detained under this um, extraordinary rendition, there's a problem here that the so-called largest democracy or only democracy in the Middle East is actually performing these acts. Can the international community have any effect and, and, and pressure Israel on this? So historically we've waited for moments like this for the United States to step in and be the arbiter. Unfortunately relations between President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu are not um, the friendliest right now. <laughs> in so other words you're not very the, optimistic that uh, the relationship uh, I'm not Israel optimistic will, that the United States right now can be the arbiter but there is a glimmer of hope here. In the last election, which um, the 20th Knesset was just sworn in on April, I'm um, sorry, March 31st, what we saw was 17 members, 17 Palestinian members actually joining the Knesset, which is about 14 percent. And they formed it as a coalition, most of them. Um, what this means is that the solution actually might come from within the Palestinian Israeli membership in this and Knesset. The relationship there politically. And, and I think President, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu just called yesterday for a meeting with these uh, Palestinian members of Knesset to move forward.